some of these questions already, then this is the time to come forward. Otherwise, I would have one actually. Uh, sorry, there's one from Alice, but it, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> I don't um, see a lot. Of I was sorry. just thinking um, about what you said um, in terms of the kind of final monologue in Lucy's film. I was thinking about whether it could be kind of language itself that could be the haunting in that context. And maybe in relation to Mariana's film, and um, maybe the presence of the translator in, the, in some of the interactions between Isabel and Lally, and whether the translation of those things could be some sort of haunting. I would say yes to both. And I think one of the directions that I was going to go into as I was writing this was the, the role of language, and specifically the role of translation, and also of accents, particularly in Mariana's film, where what, what immediately strikes you is that people are talking to each other, but in a way it's almost impossible that they are really talking to each other because they're speaking such different languages and such different accents. And there is an element of translation that is sometimes visible, but most of the time not really visible. And that really speaks to the way language tends to be taken for granted, but is actually much more, much more, com much more complex and is actually an actor in itself. But I didn't go into that direction because I didn't have space. Um, the monologue at the end of, of Lucy's work strikes me as both being about language kind of being divorced from the author, which is of course Derrida's point that as, as soon as I write something and send it into the world, it's no longer mine and becomes, it becomes everyone. But at the same time, there's also this kind of memory that there is, especially online, because you can now much easier look up where words come from. So in this particular chat room conversation, I would imagine that the people reporting it were reporting it because they somehow recognized these words or looked up where these words were coming from and tied it back to this public figure and, and the scandal. So I do feel that the one thing that, especially the, the ability for us to, to kind of look up language in a very, in a very easy way perhaps complicates the idea that language, as soon as it leaves your mouth or your home and you, you send it somewhere else, becomes totally detached from, from you, as it's now so much easier to trace language back to who said it. But I think that's a complicated question that I'd have to think about more to. Any additions to that, Josh? Well, um, my only thought really is that language itself is ghostly, um, that it involves the um, the murder of the thing that it designates. Um, I'm, I suppose I'm thinking particularly here about kind of Blanche's meditation on Lazarus, who um, who he takes really for a figure of what language does. Um, so the the kind of rotting. Um, petrifacting corpse of, of Lazarus left behind in the cave, but also um, the word is this kind of spiritualized, abstracted Lazarus that continues, or that, that, that is resurrected in, in the eternal word. So um, uh, you know, this possibility of, of language as a severance of, of um, the thing from its own thingliness, um, it, the, the generalization or abstraction of the thing. I mean, it, it comes into a very intense focus in, in the online world in all kinds of ways that I think we both talked about. Um, I think we have time for one more question, at least. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. And if it's not to be Remco, then it's going to be someone from the audience. <laughs> And yes. Um, what can you say then about um, about language and that sort of virtual space offers up the possibility for for to resolve some of the issues with that sort of derity and hospitality of being a master in your own house, but that involving giving up their mastership to a guest in that virtual space can designated more in relation to seeing 
what we could actually take in. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of, it becomes less mutually exclusive to take ownership of it because it's not really owned by anyone in the first place. I mean, I think that maybe is the has been the fantasy of virtual space, right? I mean, I think nowadays we are much more aware that the internet, for example, is not without ownership and that actually companies have a huge amount of control over which spaces are actually accessible and which spaces are not accessible on the internet. And the idea that something would be, something like virtual space would be a space of absolute hospitality, to me, it still seems problematic. And I think Derrida indicates quite clearly that absolute hospitality is something that can never really be because it's it's sort of the it's the extreme ultimate perfect perfect form of hospitality <coughs> and therefore it can't exist it's the same when he talks about absolute forgiveness for example because absolute forgiveness would mean to forgive the unforgivable and therefore it's kind of an aporia situation where it 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 poses an impossibility and absolute hospitality is sort of the same because it says okay you have to be you have to welcome the other in a way that imposes absolutely no conditions on them doesn't even ask them for their name lets them in and you take the absolute risk that the person that you invite in will take over your house will murder you will do whatever you you can imagine and this form of hospitality just in practice for Derrida never exists but it's about thinking this absolute form so that then all the actual forms of hospitality that exist can be kind of at least related to this absolute form in the sense of how how much they approximate this uh, this idea and I think with virtual space it's like what um, what Stephen was saying before about this idea that we could online we could be able to we would be able to be whoever we wanted to be it didn't turn out like that and I think we shouldn't be naive about the relation between ownership and virtual space and that actually it's much more important now to trace these lines of ownership and these lines of sort of mm-hmm. capitalizing of virtual space and of whatever we do in that virtual space than to maintain the idea that somehow virtual space could could be a space where um, where things might be totally different. I think the point I was trying to make when I was talking about Lucy's work is that what struck me very much was that to me the actual people in the video seemed so much more artificial and so much less real than the avatar in the end. So it's my 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 remark about virtual space would be more that we shouldn't think that because it's virtual space, nothing real happens there. Real things can happen there, but they also happen within similar conditions of capitalism, of ownership, of exploitation that exist in other spaces. I suppose I was making a distinction in my head from your question between the structures of a space as it is given space is something that's created between people you interact with, mm. so whether or not you can be a host, or whether or not you can freely be a host of a space that is in some way given to you, or whether where the virtuality really exists, although it exists in a structural sense, can you be completely the host of a house and then host yourself, or where is the I think, um, sorry to, but I think in, in my, my role as temporary host in this house, I'm going to have to try and uh, um, bring us to some kind of conclusion, sorry to cut you off, but uh, we've, 
landed the plane more or less on time. Um, <laughs> it's only halfway through our journey. Uh, CCA is renowned as a place of absolute hospitality, so I don't want to um, uh, impinge on your opportunities to have lunch here. It's a great restaurant. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. You never know. Uh, um, so uh, thank you, Esther and Josh, for such great insights, not just into the works, but into the theme and title of the exhibition. We're going to be back as soon as possible after half past one, if that's entirely yep. possible to do, so yep. we can get back to our, uh, our timetable, which again, unfortunately, has to be as absolute as possible. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we could all reconvene at 1.30 or just very slightly after, that would be great, and we should be all on track yep. for part two. Thank you all for being here this morning.